Welcome to a discussion on how to use straw bales in your garden. My name is Phil Radebush, and I'm an Extension Master Gardener volunteer in Buncombe County. I've used the straw bale gardening concept in the past to grow both vegetables and herbs. And today I'd like to share some basic information with you about straw bale gardens and encourage you to try this gardening technique. If this presentation makes you want to explore straw bale gardening further, these are some other resources you might find valuable. The extension services at three universities have published information on straw bale gardens. The publication number shown here can be used to find the appropriate information. The Clemson publication is the most current and comprehensive and it is the best summary of the straw bale gardening methods that I'll discuss today. I got started with straw bale gardens with this book by Joel Karsten. Joel Karsten is one of the gurus of straw bale gardens and his technique is the one that has been adopted by publications with most of the extension services. This book was published in 2013. Uh, he recently published a second edition in 2018 but it was this first edition that really got me interested in straw bale gardens and it's the techniques that I'll sh share with you today. He also has a website, strawbalegardens.com, where you can purchase his book. It has other information about straw bale gardening. Now, since he published his book, there have been a number of other books that have come out about straw bale gardens, but I have not uh, read or reviewed those and this is the source that I'm gonna rely on today. So here's an outline of what we're going to cover in this uh, presentation. We'll talk a little bit about straw itself, what I call straw basics. We'll then talk about some of the potential advantages of using straw bales for gardening. We'll talk about placement, where you should put your straw bale. A very important part of the process of straw bale gardening is bale conditioning, and we'll talk about what that is and how you do that. Talk about a couple of different planting strategies that can be used with the straw bale. Then talk about the garden management that you'll use after planting. And then finally, some recycling and reuse ideas for straw bales. So what is straw? Straw is simply the dried stalks of small grain cereal crops. The most widely available and commonly used straw in bale format is wheat straw. Uh, I lived and gardened in Kansas for 25 years, and Kansas is the largest wheat producing state in the country. So I had ready access to inexpensive, high quality wheat straw. But realize that depending on where you are, you may have access to other types of uh, cereal crop straw. And the ones listed here, barley, rye, oats, flax, and even rice uh, straw may be available for you. So my experience has been with wheat straw and that is what's most, com most commonly recommended. So what is not straw for our purposes today? Uh, hay and pine straw are not straw. Hay of course is primarily comes from grass and alfalfa and it's gonna be the early flexible stems, leaves and flowers and seed heads, uh, not dried stalks. And of course pine straw really isn't straw for our purposes. It's, it can be baled, uh, but it's, of course, pine needles and not the, the dried stalks of cereal crops. So we're going to focus on using wheat straw today. I've listed here some advantages of straw bale gardening. Probably the, the best advantage is that it is an inexpensive way to create a raised bed. It doesn't involve digging in the soil or soil preparation, and that may be very helpful if you're dealing with heavy clay soils. Uh, some people will say that it's not as labor intensive because you don't have to do digging, but as we'll see in a few minutes, uh, bale conditioning is a process that takes about two weeks and does take uh, attention every day, and so there is some labor involved in straw bale gardening. You can use it on rocky soil, on compacted clay soils, or hard surfaces. In fact, you can use a straw bale on concrete or on an asphalt driveway. Uh, very effectively. If you use good quality uh, straw, it's generally weed free, so you're going to be dealing with a weed free environment. It also minimizes soil borne diseases. 
So as an example, uh, root nematodes and uh, early blight are both problems in tomatoes that are soil-borne pests or soil-borne diseases, and those can be minimized or eliminated by using uh, straw bale methods. It's not permanent. You can have a straw bale garden in one spot this year and next year decide that you're gonna put it somewhere else. And then finally, as we'll talk about at the end of the presentation, you can reuse the straw as compost or as a soil amendment when you're done with the gardening. With placement, there are three critical elements to placement. First of all, you wanna take your straw bale and position it so that the cut end is facing up. So in this upper right picture, you can see the cut end of uh, wheat straw. You can see the hollow uh, stems. And so just kind of liken this, if, if you grabbed a handful of straws and held them together, you want the open end of the straws or the open end, uh, the cut end facing up. Secondly, you want to locate the straw bale in an optimal environment for what you want to grow. So for an example, for uh, flowering vegetables like uh, peppers and tomatoes, we generally recommend uh, at least eight hours of sunlight a day. And so you want to put your straw bale in a location that will receive that amount of sunlight. And you can do that with each of the uh, uh, plants that you're uh, going to grow. And then finally, you want to place it uh, where it will be for the entire growing season. It's very difficult to move the bales after they have been conditioned and planted. And so you really want to put them in a permanent location. Lots of different places where you can place it. Uh, you can see here in the picture on the left, they've been placed uh, on a grass lawn in uh, an acceptable location. Just realize that the grass underneath those bales is certainly not going to survive. This shows some other pictures regarding placement in the upper left. Uh, this woman is uh, actually positioning two large bales on very rocky hardscape. And again, that's a good use of, of bales in an area that wouldn't have fertile soil otherwise. The lower left picture, you can see somebody that has a variety of, of different bales uh, in a, a large open space. I like the picture on the lower right uh, with this uh, planter that's been sort of custom made. It's a straw bale planter on a deck and they've put casters on it and so they can move that around. And again, straw bales in this kind of situation can be very effectively used uh, on, a, on a deck. And then the upper right picture, uh, I show that for a couple reasons. One is they're using these straw bales as a raised bed, but they've really placed the, the bales in inappropriately because you can see that the cut ends are actually running pair or the, the straw is running parallel to the ground and the cut ends are not face up. One other idea is to place straw bales on wood pallets. If you have a low spot in the garden that stays wet all the time, it might be good to elevate the straw bale uh, off the ground. As we'll see at the end of the presentation, you can actually stack three or four or five wood pallets on top of each other, place the straw bale on top of that, and you'll actually then have a raised bed that's at about a waist height. I like the picture on the right or this planter. Somebody has really created a, a very nice looking planter that they've inserted a straw bale and this could even be planted to make it more decorative. So bale conditioning is a big part of the process and so we're gonna spend a few minutes going through that. And bale conditioning is nothing more than creating an environment that begins the straw bale decomposition. In other words, let it rot. And to understand bale conditioning, it'll help to use concepts that we normally discuss with composting. And for composting to occur, we generally talk about four key elements, browns, greens, air, and water. And the, we use these four elements to create an environment that promotes the growth of bacteria, fungi, and actinomycete organisms that promote decomposition or rot. So if we think about it, our straw bales already have two of these four elements. Uh, we talk about browns in composting, and browns are, are materials that are high in carbon and provide an energy source for the microorganisms. And of course, a straw is nothing but a brown. Uh, 
for efficient composting to occur, we also need a source of oxygen. It occurs most efficiently in an aerobic environment. So again, straw inherently has lots of pockets of air throughout it. So what we really need to do is provide water and greens. Water, of course, is an essential element for all living organisms. And so one of the first things we're gonna do for conditioning is adding water to the bale. And greens are a source of nitrogen, nitrogen being a key uh, nutrient for all living organisms. And so we're gonna provide water and nitrogen as part of this conditioning process. So on days one, two, and three, and this is gonna be about a two week process, but on days one, two, and three, we wanna water the bales to saturation, meaning that we wanna add enough water to the bale so that water is literally running or dripping out of the bottom. And this will require on the first day, quite a bit of water. It may take as many as, as much as 20 to 40 gallons of water per bale to get it completely saturated the first day. So the picture on the left I show, because again, it shows uh, inappropriate placement of the bale. This individual is watering the bale on top, which is where the stems are uh, lengthwise, and it's not the cut end. The cut end is not up as shown in the middle picture. So uh, this person should have rotated the, the bale about 90 degrees. So again, you can use water to saturate the bale. If you have one, two, or three bales, then you can just use a hose. But if you have a larger number of bales, it's probably best to use some kind of soaker hose system, uh, as shown in the picture on the right, uh, where you can go ahead and saturate a large number of bales uh, with not a lot of effort. Now, I have five-year-old twin grandchildren that live uh, near me, and they love to get involved in gardening activities, and one of their favorite things is to water with a hose, and so you might be able to uh, enlist some help in this as well. On day four, we are going to add a high nitrogen fertilizer and dolomitic lime uh, to our conditioning. We're gonna sprinkle those on top and then uh, lightly water those into the bale using what, we, what I call warm water. And by warm water, I mean a couple of things. One is it's water that is warmer than what typically comes out of the cold water uh, spigot. Uh, most water is 60 to 65 degrees when it comes out of the tap. And so having it somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees uh, helps. And by also warm water, we mean uh, water that's been dechlorinated. And probably the easiest way to do that is I just fill up five gallon buckets of water, uh, leave them outside uh, for about 24 hours and uh, much of the chlorine will go ahead and dissipate. So by warm water, we're talking about warmer than, a little bit warmer than top water, not hot, uh, warm water that's been dechlorinated. So one source of a high nitrogen fertilizer is ammonium sulfate. And most fertilizers are gonna have a number on the front uh, that uh, is the nitrogen, phosphate, and potash percentage. So in this case, the ammonium sulfate is 2100. It's 21% nitrogen, 0% phosphate, and 0% potash, which is a source of potassium. And in this case, we would use sprinkle about one half to one cup of ammonium sulfate over the surface of the, the bale and lightly water that in. You can also use what are called complete fertilizers. And here's an example of a lawn fertilizer that's 24-4-12. So it's 24% nitrogen, 4% phosphate, 12% potash. And again, if you have a nitrogen percentage in the 20% range, about a half to one a cup of this sprinkled over the bale. And if you want an organic uh, source of, of nitrogen, uh, one good one is blood meal. Uh, blood meal has about half the nitrogen level of these other two fertilizers. So most blood meals are about 10 to 12% uh, nitrogen. And so we would use more of that. We would use about two or three cups uh, sprinkled over the, the top of the bale. The advan other advantage of blood meal is oftentimes it will repel rabbits and deer. 
So it might be helpful in a, in a situation where you also want to re repel those pests. After we've put the nitrogen fertilizer on top, we also, on day four, want to use dolomitic lime, two cups per bale. Uh, lime comes in two basic types, uh, calcitic lime, which is calcium carbonate, and dolomitic lime, which is calcium carbonate uh, and magnesium. So this provides a calcium and magnesium source uh, in the bale. One other product that I have not used, uh, but what might be beneficial, uh, is called Bale Buster. Uh, this is a proprietary product that's been uh, put together by Joel Karsten, who I talked about earlier uh, with, in relationship to his book. And you can go out on his web stop, website, strawbalegardens.com, and get more information about this. Uh, he does sell you this box that allows you to uh, condition five bales. It's about $30, so that's about $6 per bale. And it's a proprietary mixture of porcine blood meal, plus he has put in uh, spores of bacteria and fungi that will hasten the decomposition pro process. So again, I have not used this product, but it makes sense that it might be helpful. On day seven to nine, uh, we want to continue with the nitrogen fertilizer. We have not uh, used the dolomitic lime other than on day four. And so on day seven to nine, we want to use half the amount of nitrogen fertilizer that we used previously. And again, water that in with our warm water. So what we're trying to do is use the water and the high nitrogen fertilizer to begin a decomposition of the straw bale. On day 10, we want to add a balanced fertilizer if we haven't been using one previously. So an example would be 10, 10, 10, and we would use approximately a cup of that on the bale. And again, lightly water that in with warm water. If you want organic options, you can use bone meal as a source of phosphate, and we can use a sulfate of potash as our potash or potassium supplement. And just do that on day 10. And then on day 11, we want to start checking the bale temperature. It's best to use a compost thermometer that has a long stem. And hopefully over this 10 day process, we've started composting or decomposition of the straw bale. Oftentimes we can reach temperatures of 120 degrees or more. And we really don't want to plant until the temperature, internal temperature of that bale is back below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the conditioning, and it may take uh, two or three days after you get done for the temperature to get less than 100 degrees, and then you're ready to plant. And one of the things we'll talk about later in straw bale management is certainly watering, uh, because straw bales will dry out very quickly. And so if you're using more than two or three bales at a time, again, you may want to use a soaker hose and place that uh, before planting. So there's two basic planting methods, and the first one is just similar to what you would do in the soil, and that's that you're going to go ahead and plant in holes, and you can do this for seedlings or seeds, and shown some examples are pictured here. And I like the picture in the upper right because you can see the dark brown discoloration of the straw bale tells you that this straw bale has been well conditioned and that the uh, decomposition process has begun. The size of the hole in general is, is usually recommended to be six by six by six inches. So uh, a nice large hole, and then you wanna go ahead and fill that with some type of potting mix or garden medium. I usually mix it with a compost or aged manure. Fill up the hole, and then you can plant your seedlings directly in that, just like you would in the soil and you can plant the seeds then at the appropriate depth for the plant. Uh, the bottom pictures, the one on the left, I like to grow uh, vining vegetables in, in bales. They really look nice and do well, so pumpkins and um, winter squash and cucumbers, et cetera, uh, will work nicely in a straw bale. The lower right shows you that you can use all sides of the bale, so this shows some leaf lettuce, well, they planted it not only in the top, but in the side. And I've actually done this and, and made herb gardens. 
So you can take one straw bale, condition it, and you can plant uh, about four different herbs on top, two or three different herbs on each side, and you can almost have an entire herb garden uh, in just one or two uh, bales of straw. This shows pictures of some other uh, planting ideas for seedlings. A lot of people you do use these for tomatoes, and you can see the upper right-hand corner, this individual has just put straw bales uh, next to their house. Uh, you can put it out in the yard. And again, you're gonna need to use some type of uh, trellising system if you're gonna grow something like tomatoes. The picture on the left, upper left, you also see this individual has put the straw bales on black plastic. You can put cardboard or paper underneath to try to uh, discourage uh, weeds as well. This is actually a picture on the right of Joel Karsten himself. Uh, he's a big believer in using straw bales for tomatoes. And this is the setup that he uses. He us usually uses uh, two, to, two to four bales and then will use metal stakes on either end, puts a piece of wood across the top uh, to, to immobilize that and then uses nettings. So you're gonna use, need to use some kind of uh, trellising system for the appropriate vegetable. And certainly if you're using or growing tomatoes, then using a determinate uh, or a uh, semi-dwarf variety may be helpful so it doesn't get too tall. Planting guides will vary for seedlings or seeds. These are some general recommendations that are given. Uh, the Clemson publication actually has a nice chart with what they recommend for the number of seedlings um, to put in each bale. Um, here, usually tomatoes, it's one or two per bale. Uh, for pumpkins, I usually use two and let, let them vine off each end of the bale. Uh, again, you can see some other recommendations here and would point you to the Clemson publication for some other uh, consideration. The other main planting technique then is what's called flatbed planting. And that's fairly simple and straightforward. You're, you're just using this straw bale as a raised bed and you're gonna add some type of growing medium, usually a potting soil uh, with some added compost or aged manure. Typically uh, make that two to four inches thick, depending on how thick you need it for uh, your appropriate seed. This shows some pictures uh, of using this type of flatbed planting. The upper left, you can see uh, leaf lettuce, uh, the lower left flowers, uh, the lower right looks like those are some uh, beans that were planted. And I like the upper right picture because it shows you that this is a well-conditioned bale. It's one, uh, certainly as decomposition has occurred, it will begin to shrink in the middle. And so then you can put soil and, and have actually a rim of uh, undecomposing straw around the outside. So once you've achieved planting, there's two major concerns with long-term garden management. And the first is water. And even though we have uh, heavily watered the straw bale to begin with as part of the conditioning process, uh, in hot, dry weather, they can dry out quite quickly. If you have a large number of, of bales, again, using some kind of uh, drip irrigation or soaker hoses is probably the easiest. I've usually only been managing three or four straw bales at once. And so just hand watering uh, the plants is probably appropriate. Another method is to use uh, milk jugs or to use soda bottles that you can go ahead and put a small hole in the cap and fill those up and stick those into the bale and they'll slowly release water. But water management is something that's key. And especially if you're going to be gone for several days, uh, you need to have somebody watch it very closely on your behalf. Even though the composting straw uh, will provide some nutrients, and uh, warmth through the process. Uh, you can certainly run into some issues with uh, nutrient deficiencies. And so the recommendation is to use one half to one cup of a balanced fertilizer, 10, 10, 10 would be an example, uh, one half to one cup per bale per month, and then lightly water that in. And then just watch, watch the plants very closely for any other signs of, of nutrient deficiencies. But in general, uh, my experience has been that they do very well with just this type of general fertilization. Diseases and uh, pests can still occur. 
Uh, the picture on the left is early blight in tomatoes, which is a soil-borne disease, and we would expect to have less of a problem with that. Other diseases like late blight are airborne, and so you're going to have just as many problems with that in straw bale tomatoes as you will if traditionally planting them in the soil. And then on, on the right, we have a squash bug, and so we can certainly still have insect pests that occur with straw bale gardens just like they do for traditional gardens. Recycling and reuse is pretty straightforward. Uh, some individuals talk about getting two years worth of gardening out of a bale. Uh, what I found is at the end of a long growing season, if you start conditioning and plant your bale in, in May or June and keep it through the fall that uh, you're pretty much done with it. Uh, if you think you can get a second year out of it, you can. Uh, but generally, uh, generally, generally speaking, you're going to want to then uh, recycle that for either soil amendment or if you do have uh, composting, you can do that. And I like this situ situation, and I actually have done this as well, is actually build temporary uh, composting bins out of straw bales and then incorporate that into the compost. I would encourage you to go out and look at uh, various other ideas online. Uh, these are some ideas if you just go in and type in straw bale gardens into a search engine and, and click on images, you'll, you'll see lots of different ideas. Uh, here individuals have used straw bales uh, for cold frames. And I encourage you to be creative. Uh, again, the upper left hand picture I really like. They've stacked uh, three or four or five uh, wood pallets and then put a straw bale on top and so you have a raised bed that's at about uh, waist height. Uh, one individual has created a, a hoop house. Others have created a kind of a raised bed that they put soil in between uh, and I really like the, the garden in the upper right picture. So I encourage you to be creative and uh, think about how you might use this in your own gardening environment. If you have, if you need additional help or have questions, uh, please realize that Extension Master Gardeners are available through the Garden Helpline. You can either call or leave a voicemail message at the phone number here, or you can send a message or pictures to bunkummg at gmail.com. I hope this presentation has raised your interest in trying a straw bale garden and that you have a successful gardening year ahead.